This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. As we all know by now, VPNs are a pretty great tool for browsing the web. Using one on unsecure websites can help protect you from leaking sensitive info. They encrypt and hide all browsing data from your ISP so no governments, companies, or other third parties can spy on what you're doing online. But of course, one of the biggest benefits is VPNs can be used to access region-locked content by spoofing your location, allowing you to see shows, movies, or anime you otherwise wouldn't have access to. Surfshark VPN has been a longtime sponsor on our channel and the VPN I've used for quite a while now, and it's for good reason. A single subscription with them allows you to use their VPN service on an unlimited number of devices. They have all sorts of other bonus programs you get along with your sub, and if you sign up today using code GBay99 at checkout, you'll get 83% off your purchase plus four months free, all while supporting our content and channel. Thanks again to Surfshark for the continued support. Now back to the video. On December 17th, 2020, Riot Games announced that they were making a League of Legends MMO. The news broke really suddenly as rioter Greg Street, otherwise known as Ghostcrawler, posted a cryptic tweet teasing that he was working on a massive new game for Riot. When asked point blankly whether or not it was an MMO, he said, it's an MMO. This of course set the League of Legends and wider gaming community on fire with excitement and anticipation, even though we were still likely more than half a decade away from the game's release but it's probably not that big of a surprise to see this reaction considering how much people love MMOs. MMOs, or massively multiplayer online games, are one of the most interesting genres in the world of gaming today, because not that long ago, these were the titans of the industry. They were the big kahunas, what everyone wanted to be. You had a new MMO coming out every week. It felt like trying to cash in on just how popular and successful that genre really was. But today, not so much. I mean, plenty of MMOs are still around. Final Fantasy's doing pretty well. WoW still exists. RuneScape's here. But for the most part, the golden age of the genre has come and gone. Instead, if you look at the world of online gaming today, you'll find MOBA games like League of Legends or Battle Royale titles like Fortnite, which is interesting because these are games people complain about. I mean, people who spend thousands of hours playing these games complain about them all the time as if they would rather not be playing them and, you know, maybe would rather be playing MMOs. Perhaps that's the reason we see so much excitement when League announces that they're making an MMO. Anyway, this whole genre of game is, is one that I find very near and dear to my heart and one that I think a lot of people misunderstand. Uh, I, in particular, am very excited for the League MMO, and I think that Riot might have a very good shot at reviving this semi-comatose genre, which that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. I hope you enjoy. Fair warning, this is gonna be one of those videos where a guy on the internet rambles for way too long about a subject that he is very passionate about, but that doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things. If you're just here on this channel for the feature-length documentaries, we've got a new one coming out next month, but if that sounds like something you'd like watching, please stick around. The idea for MMOs, that being large online games where huge groups of players can come together and play within a persistent static world, is something that goes all the way back to the early 1970s. But the MMO as we know it today really started gaining popularity in the 1990s. The internet is really what made all of this possible, as of course online gaming was sent into a bit of a revolution with the advent of the internet, as more and more people in America and across the globe got internet access, multiple developers started working on a number of different titles that would all fall into the classification of MMO. But in the late 90s and early 2000s, there were really three titles that succeeded above all others, which would later be dubbed the big three, those being Ashron's Call, EverQuest, and Ultima Online. These titles found popularity unlike any other, and really succeeded in doing something that no other game had up until that point, which was building a believable virtual world where a new player could come in and live a virtual life. Keep in mind, these games might not look that impressive today, but they were released in the late 90s and early 2000s when most of the internet just looked like this. 
the internet was a place where you would go to maybe read some news or shoot off some emails to coworkers. I mean, there wasn't a lot to do and certainly nothing that was interactive. Many people at the time still thought the internet was a passing fad that was gonna fade away and become irrelevant. You can still find all sorts of articles calling it dead and declaring that it wasn't all that useful after all. I mean, that was almost understandable for the time though, since there wasn't a lot you could do online, but that's what made MMOs so exciting. This new genre of game was the first glance at what the internet could become, which was a place where you could live a virtual life with a virtual self that's separate from the real world. Doing things like building your own character, leveling up their skills, showing off your talent, and how well you knew the world's mechanics by doing things like PvP, this was appealing to gamers, obviously, but it was also appealing for everyone, showing the upper limits of what we might see with online spaces in the years to come. The MMO was a really interesting genre since it kind of pushed technology and the internet forward itself. I mean, this was something that you don't normally see in gaming. Normally you see technology advance and then you see developers making all sorts of little prototype games about what they can do with the new advancements in technology and, and little fun projects that, that kind of show off what they might be able to do with a few games in the future. But the MMO is kind of the opposite. The MMO was at the forefront of what the internet was about to become, what the internet was turning into, and you could kind of look to the MMO to see the future. And if you wanted to be a part of that future, you had to play one of these games yourself. After the Big Three's dominance and success in the late 90s, we saw a second generation of MMOs being created and released in the early to mid 2000s. These titles oftentimes did a number of different things, trying to carve out their own niche in the market, but most most of them tried to push things forward in one of two ways. The first group of games tried to push things forward in terms of video games. Games like World of Warcraft, Guild Wars, Dark Age of Camelot, these were all games that were released which aimed to provide some sort of spin on the genre by uh, inventing new exciting ways to actually play the games, be it complicated and exciting raiding systems or super intense PvP. A lot of games tried to really look at the MMO and see what they could do to expand on it as a video game genre but that's not all that was done. But other titles out there looked in a different direction, where some games that were released during this second generation almost put the gameplay to the side and instead focused solely on building the virtual world. These were games like Second Life, which wasn't really a game as much as it was just a virtual world where you could go and create an avatar and just hang out with other strangers in a persistent virtual space. I mean, that game was something that got wildly popular because that's what a lot of people really liked about the MMO, was the ability to have that virtual life. You could even look at certain games out there like RuneScape as well, which sort of fits into this category. If you're unaware, RuneScape was the first browser-based MMO, so rather than needing fancy graphics cards or anything in terms of your PC specs, all you needed to do was be able to run Internet Explorer and you could connect to the world of RuneScape. All of these games found their place and built some pretty massive communities during the 2000s, but it was really off the back of that second idea, the ability to have a virtual life where you were in a virtual world, hanging out with virtual communities that was all separate from your normal, regular, real life, that was the power of the MMO, and is really what it was at the forefront of introducing the wider world to. And that's also kind of what eventually led to a bit of a decline as time went on. As the 2000s rolled on, the MMO continued to grow in popularity, but this was also the period of time when the rest of the internet started becoming way more interactive as well. Before long, you could go to all sorts of different websites or use all sorts of different programs to have a virtual life where you could connect with others online in a similar way that wasn't too different from what you would do in an MMO. 
Before long, we had social media with sites like Facebook and Twitter, where you could go and have a virtual space and connect with friends, message people, hang out in communities. You also had all sorts of websites like Twitter and YouTube, where you could create content and go by a username, meeting strangers and hanging out with virtual friends, discussing hobbies or showing off accomplishments. Before long, there were also various different websites and forums like Reddit, where you could go and again, go by a username, hang out in a virtual space, meet new people, make friends with them, discuss things in a wider community, or just personally, one-on-one. -on -one. Before long, there were a lot of different opportunities on the internet where you could go and have a virtual life that was separate from your real life, kind of like you would in an MMO. These websites, of course, aren't games. I mean, they aren't fulfilling that part of the equation, but that's the direction that online gaming went as well. If you look at any of the popular online games today, you see that a lot of them aim to be that same sort of virtual space where they build their own virtual community and have that persistent feeling that you're a part of a world with a virtual life, a username that's tagged to you, and you get to show things off in a way that's really not that different dissimilar from an MMO. Take a look at League of Legends. In League of Legends, you have an account that has a level tied to your name. The more you play the game, the higher the level goes. You have personalization that you can make with the account with profile pictures and all sorts of different skins. There's, a, I mean skins, there's cosmetics that you can wear to show off to other people. You can make friends and foes within the game. You can work really hard to learn the game systems and become quite good at it. Show off your talents with all sorts of different titles and ranked ladders. I mean, a lot of the gameplay element of MMOs and the multiplayer setting is something that you can get similar feelings in most of the online games you see today. In fact, one of the few differences that still remain is you don't need to pay 15 bucks a month to play League of Legends. You don't need to have a high-end PC to run Facebook. You don't need to pay a subscription to get on Twitter, get on YouTube. That's not something that you have to worry about. It is easier than ever to have an online virtual life with a virtual self, a virtual avatar that's separate from your real life. You don't need MMOs for that anymore. And that is what started the decline of the MMO. I know it might sound crazy to a lot of you that I'm describing playing League of Legends and using Facebook as a substitute for all the great experiences you'll have in MMOs. And to many degrees, I understand and agree with you. There is no substitute for the MMO. In particular, my favorite game that I spent my entire youth playing was RuneScape. I have all sorts of wonderful memories of grinding the levels to try and get my account up to high stats. I joined a clan, I remember, and doing huge clan wars was super fun. My clan was called Knight's Reflection, and I still remember there was a guy there named Blues who had 99 range, and he was one of the few people in the clan that had a 99, so that like inspired me to go and try and get 99 range myself and like post every level up on the forum as I did. I mean, there were a lot of really fun memories that I made when playing that game, and a lot of interactions I had with people who were strangers when I met them, but who became friends that I genuinely cared about the more and more time I spent with them both within the game and in online circles outside of it, like our clan's forum. I mean, I could speak ad nauseum about all of the experiences I had with that game and all the people I met through playing it. I mean, the RuneScape community, the YouTube community, the people that made the RuneScape music videos, there is a nostalgia trip that I go on once a month just trying to relive those glory days. But the more and more I think about it, the more I start to realize that it was the community and the interactions with the people that really made the game so special. The game was almost of lesser importance. MMOs were such a beautiful genre because of their ability to build worlds that players could then populate and have experiences together. And the internet already allows you to do that. Nowadays, that's what the internet is. It's all sorts of different social media sites and places where you can go and interact with thousands of people from all across the globe, sometimes in less than positive ways. I mean, this YouTube video right here is something where I am speaking to thousands of people. You guys are interacting with me. I'm interacting with you. You're gonna flame me in the comments for saying wrong things and giving bad speeches or, or 
doing words wrong. As time went on, the internet advancing to a point where you didn't need MMOs to have that kind of connection is really what killed the genre. But that being said, it's not dead yet. I think that MMOs have a genuinely good shot at making a comeback, specifically with this new League of Legends MMO, for reasons I'll get into in a moment, but big picture, I think MMOs need to make a comeback because the virtual life I'm leading on the internet today kind of sucks. The internet today is not a fun place to lead a virtual life. What do you do on the internet today? You get in fights with people on Twitter about politics. You argue with people in YouTube comments about the Holocaust. You look at social media because you can't stop yourself from scrolling through TikTok or comparing yourself to models on Instagram or looking at Facebook just because you want to be making sure that you're doing better in life than all the dumb idiots you went to high school with. Like, people don't really use the internet in a super healthy way today. And I include myself in that 100%. The large part of my existence online is getting in fights with people over dumb, trivial, unimportant things. And I hate it. You know, this virtual life, it sucks. It's not fun at all. It brings way more negativity in my life compared to positivity. And that's what we need MMOs for. We need MMOs because I don't know why. I didn't behave that way in MMOs. I treated people like people. I treated people, when I was spending time in a virtual world and I met a stranger, I treated them as if I would treat a stranger I met in real life. Which isn't to say that everybody plays MMOs that way. I mean, there's plenty of ways you can play MMOs. You can be a jerk and, you know, gaming communities certainly have their fair share of jerks. But for some reason, I think being able to participate in a world that you see, that, that feels like a real world, that's something that... it. it makes people kinder, I think. It, it makes people treat each other as if they're human beings in a way that just looking at tweets or text online certainly doesn't. I think that's what people mean when they say they miss MMOs. I think they mean that they miss having a virtual life that doesn't suck. <laughs> and I think that there really is a good shot that MMOs can make a comeback, again, specifically with this new League of Legends MMO, and let me tell you why. If there's ever gonna be another MMO in the future that reaches the level of success and popularity that prior titles already have in their peak, that MMO is gonna have to do something pretty special. And that thing, in my opinion at least, is they're gonna have to build a believable world. That's the real key to an MMO finding success today. It's not the end game content. It's not the raids. It's not the PVP system. It's all about building a believable world and almost ignoring the gameplay, focusing on building that living, breathing ecosystem. If you build it, the players will come. There's no better game out there that succeeded at this, in my opinion at least, than RuneScape. Let's keep talking about RuneScape. RuneScape is a really interesting game considering that it was released after the big three, but kind of before the second generation of MMOs really kicked off. Coming out in 2000 and being built initially just for browsers, it was not easy on the eyes, even today. It doesn't look all that fancy. Uh, the old school version at least can have some jank to it, but it's still around. It has survived while many other games have not, which is kind of shocking and surprising. And I think it kind of goes down to how well they built the world. When you think about a lot of MMO titles today, think about games like World of Warcraft, they're, they're really built like theme parks. When you get dropped into WoW and create a character, you're sort of railroaded across regions in a way that's not too dissimilar from a single player game. You go and talk to all the NPCs in a location to get quests and you do the quests, you kill 10 rats, you level up, eventually you get leveled up high enough that you can progress to the next area and repeat the process over and over. That's what a large part of World of Warcraft is. And I mean, a lot 
lot of WoW fans would still say that the leveling isn't really part of the game. WoW begins when you reach max level, and the end game content is really what you play it for. You don't play it for the leveling experience necessarily, and that's kind of, um, I mean, uh, uh, you can buy an almost max leveled account in WoW today. It's, it's, it's not really what the game's built for. This theme park structure can be fun to go through, and, and you can have really big and exciting expansive worlds, but it can also feel really barren. If you're ever at a point where there's not a lot of players playing the game, not a lot of players on the server, it's kind of not super fun to walk through these hugely desolate theme parks that, that don't have anybody in them. I mean, it can be beautiful, it can look pretty, it can be awesome at, at times, but it can certainly feel as though it's not a living, breathing world. It's a game that a lot of people are not playing. RuneScape is interesting by comparison, because in RuneScape, things were built in a much different way. Rather than catering things to the player, RuneScape and its entire world was really built as if it was built for the citizens, as in the NPCs of the world. Cities are filled with buildings and shops that aren't necessarily relevant or useful to the player, but they exist because, hey, Citizens in the game, the NPCs, they need places to live, places to cook, places to eat, places to go and do things. I mean, a lot of the world in RuneScape exists for the sake of the world, for the kingdoms, for the alliances, for the monsters. The world was built for the world, not the players. So much of what you find in RuneScape is not going to be relevant to you. It's not gonna be useful. Not every item is gonna be something you wanna use. Not every building is something you're gonna wanna walk into. It exists because that's how a world exists. People need homes to live in. They need churches to pray at. They need shops to go and buy things. They live in dedicated communities in small kingdoms because that's safer than living out with the monsters. And so what this means for a player is that you kind of have to go all over the place. You have to go and specifically seek things out if you want to do a specific thing. Like, early quests that you can do when you're first starting the game with a fresh account, they are spread all over the map. There is no starting area that only has all the early level quests that you get done and move on to the next area. You have to go all across the map if you want to do all the quests that you want to do when you first start off with a fresh account. But this makes the world feel so real. It makes everything feel like it's alive. Like whether I whether I'm there as a player or not, the world moves on and it has things that continue happening within it monsters that continue existing, people that continue living their lives. Like RuneScape is really interesting in that whether there are two players on a server or 2000, the world feels just as alive to a point where you can play RuneScape as a single player experience and still have just as much fun as if you're playing it like a normal MMO, interacting with as many people as possible. And that's not hyperbole either. There is literally a mode in RuneScape that is a single player mode. I don't know if RuneScape was the first MMO to do this, but in RuneScape, there was an Iron Man mode in the game where uh, when you build your account, when you first get into the game, it gives you an option to intentionally restrict your account so you cannot trade with anyone else. People can't help you kill bosses together. You can't, you can't really do much with anybody else in the world, any other player character other than talk to them, but that's it. Everything else in game you have to do yourself. You have to level every level. You have to get every item for every quest. You have to go and do every quest. You can't trade with people. You can't, you can't do anything. You have to do it all yourself. You can't do anything with anyone else. That doesn't sound fun, but in the context of RuneScape, it, it can be really enjoyable and rewarding. RuneScape as a game is so interesting because it might be one of the only MMOs out there where so much of it is not built for the player. So much of it is built for the lore, which is not what you would expect. Like teleports in the game will teleport you to different cities across the world naturally, but you can find ancient teleports that were from thousands of years ago that teleport you to different places that aren't relevant or at times useful at all, but 
they exist because that's where cities used to be. They're, you're teleporting to the ruins of those old cities. All these weird details make the game feel so alive, and it makes it feel alive whether people are there or not. It is such an exciting world to get lost in, to learn about, to read the history of in a bookshelf on in your house. It's so fun to experience that I honestly... I mean, that must be at least part of why it has lasted as long as it has, 21 years now. I'm starting to ramble quite a bit here, which I understand, so let me go ahead and try to wrap things up. All of this is to say that MMOs were a really exciting moment in gaming history in that they allowed people to build a virtual life for a virtual version of themselves in a way that no other space on the internet allowed you to do. But as time went on and as other areas of the internet allowed you to do exactly that, they didn't become, they, they, suddenly they weren't so special. Suddenly it, it didn't feel like it was worth paying $15 a month just so you could continuously level your account over and over and over. But MMOs do still provide one of the most exciting and fun opportunities for you to have human connection, to be able to meet and hang out with people that you otherwise would not have access to, other people that you in no other context in life would ever speak to, and getting to make that kind of, that connection is, is so unbelievably memorable and such a fulfilling experience that I think everybody would love to have a new MMO that that draws us all in and gives us those experiences again. But for an MMO to do that, it, it needs to be an exciting, believable, and living world. It needs to be a living ecosystem that, that feels like it's worth spending time in and, and feels like it's not something that's a game, that, that it's really a virtual world. But I think League of Legends knows that. I think that Riot Games understands that. I mean, if you look at everything that they've been doing for the past multiple years now, they've been doing nothing but building up the history, the lore, the world of Runeterra. I mean, look at Arcane, this massively successful Netflix show that is incredibly fun and exciting to watch in large part because of its excellent world building. Look at these places, I want to explore these places, I want to go to these places in an MMO. Look at Legends of Runeterra, the card game for League of Legends, which in a very similar way has so many exciting fun areas that you want to go to just by virtue of the fact that cards in these games come from different regions and each region has a very distinct feel. It has a very distinct little exciting flair to it that you get glimpses glimpses of when just looking at the art that, that's done for each of the character's cards. It's so exciting and enticing and I want to go to these places and explore them. Riot has been doing all these different projects that have teased the exciting wider universe that League of Legends takes place in. And I think, I hope at least they understand that really to build an MMO and, and to really capture a player's sense of wonder and, and make it feel like it's worth spending multiple thousands of hours within this game, you, you need to make sure that you're building a believable and exciting world that's worth exploring and being a part of. And, oh, I really hope they get it right. I've missed MMOs, man. Ah, happy new year, everybody. I hope you guys have a great 2022. I know our YouTube channel has been somewhat barren in recent weeks and recent months. I've been working on a lot of projects that I haven't gotten to show you guys yet, but um, I, I have big plans for, for the new year, for the upcoming year, for the upcoming decade, and uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to it because I know I haven't been around a lot, but don't think I've forgotten about making content. I got some good stuff on the horizon. Anyway, though, I hope you guys all enjoyed watching this video. I will see you in the new year. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Good luck in solo queue and have a wonderful day.